I don't know what it is that you've done to me. Oh, you know you can't sing. But it's causing act in such a crazy way. Whatever it is that you do when you do what you do to me. It's a feeling that I want to stay. Girl, you're such a hater. Girl, you're such a hater. I can't take it. Girl. I can't take it. You're, you're my own child. Is my own child. Tour or girl's tour? Girl, you trying it. <laughs> Bears, Chris here. Welcome to my channel. So in this video, this is part two of my styling and slaying series. I'm not going to say wig edition. I'm going to say wig and extension edition because I don't know how many videos I plan on churning out on this topic, but when we extend it to wigs and extensions, there's no telling how many videos you can make out of it. But in this video, I wanted to show you guys how I sort of customize my hairline using the plucking method. <laughs> so that's plucking out or squeezing out my hairline to create a more seamless and flawless looking hairline without the assistance of baby hairs. Now this is something that I am still trying to master. I'm still trying to master. I think that I got it close enough where I can live with it and not feel self-conscious about like the hairline showing in public. Again, I'm not the kind of person that hates baby hairs on a lace frontal. I don't like to rely heavily on baby hairs to make the lace frontal look more realistic. I think that baby hair should be used like aesthetically, like if you kind of like that look, that should be the primary and then on a practical sense, then that's secondary. So this is the final look to my customized hairline. I took the hairline a little bit back. I do start off the video with my hairline already kind of pre-plucked, but I knew that I wanted to kind of go back into the hairline a little bit more because I have a bigger forehead and I don't particularly want my unit to be sitting like this far down on my forehead where my forehead looks like teeny tiny. I'm, I'm pretty much cool and content with the fact that I don't have a really small forehead. Like almost all of the features on my face is kind of and I'm cool with that. So it was just like really, really bugging me that once I wore my unit completely flush to the head and everything is in place, my hairline was still not as far back as I wanted it to be. So I decided to film the process of me kind of customizing my hairline and all that jazz. So you guys will see that later on in the video. Another part of this video that I wanna show you guys is how to secure your lace frontal unit using glue. I'm saying glue in quotations, because it's not really glue, but it's just as strong as glue. And I'm so excited to show you guys. Now, I am not going to lie. What I'm gonna tell you guys about this method is nothing new. If you guys follow these types of videos on YouTube, or if you see these types of videos on Instagram, certainly you have heard about this product used in replace of glue. But I am here to give a testimony, a testimony that this is the bee's knees, hands down best product to replace traditional lace glue and I strongly encourage you guys to try it out if I mean if that's your thing you know if you want extra security you want to blow with the wind honey you want to be like Beyonce boo okay you want to have that fan hit and it ain't gonna slip so <laughs> you'll learn more about that as you go along in the video as well so let me stop yep 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 yep, yep. as usual and let's go ahead and get right into the video Okay guys, so let's get right into some of the things that you will need in order to customize your hairline on your lace frontal unit. I am using a fine tooth rat tail comb and that's going to help me kind of comb the hairs out of the way that I don't need in the way and yeah. You guys know what combs are for, right? This is optional so I don't know if I'm going to really need these but I have these duck bill clips right here. So these metal duck bill clips. And that's just used to kind of help further keep the hair out of the way and kind of create a decent amount of tension so that when you are plucking some hair away, the rest of the hair that you don't want plucked away kind of stays into place. Again, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to need this. I may use it for the purposes of uh, demonstration, but because my hair is wet, I feel confident that the majority of the hair is going to stay back out of the way. 
I'm going to use, of course, some tweezers because we need to use tweezers to pluck out those fine hairs. And then later on in the video, I'm going to show you guys how I adhere my lace frontal down. That's if I want like an extra, extra, extra read all about it, hold, and I'll show you guys what I'm using for that. All right, so let's take a good look at the current hairline that I am working with. This unit I've already plucked away, but I haven't kind of plucked it to my satisfaction. So this is like the first phase of the plucking and there's some symmetry problems that we have going on. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna comb the hair out of the way. As for my actual hairline, my hairline kind of goes like up in here, like that. It's a little bit higher and it's a little bit further back than this thing on a jig. And I don't want to pluck this all the way back to my natural hairline. I do want to give it some room. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to shallow out some of the density here in order to kind of make it look a little bit more natural and more like my hairline. So taking my tweezers, I'm going to start from right to left. It's because I'm right handed and I'm just going to kind of grab some hair back. That's something that the clip can do for you. If you don't want to grab it, you just kind of want to keep the lace taut. But for now, I'm going to use my hand because my lace feels pretty secure. And I'm just going to kind of randomly and sporadically pick up some hairs. And I'm moving back and forth pretty quickly. And I'm pulling away the hair that I plucked. You don't really want to make a straight line. So I'm just plucking that away. This is how much I've plucked out so far. A lot of hair. So as you can see, I kind of have like a widow's peak thing going on and I think I'm gonna keep that, that peak right there. As for the hair on the side, I kind of have to readjust it on the side a little bit just to pull it down. So you guys can see Let me see. So this is how it looks now. I just kind of brought it up a little bit. I'm gonna do the same over in this side. Now if it looks a little ashy around here is because I bleached the knots and I didn't tone it. And after I bleached the knots without toning it, I also did not tint my closure. And tinting the closure is like one of those optional steps that I would encourage, especially women of color with, with deeper and richer skin tones to kind of do with their lace closures. Just take it to that next level in customizing it and making you look realistic. I like to tint my personal units because I mean it just it does just that it gives you the benefit or it gives you the same kind of effect that adding makeup or concealer would but it's more permanent and in my opinion it's more natural I don't personally like to intentionally put makeup on my closures to like make it look realistic I just rather it already be damn near ready to wear with the exception of styling if it's not already pre-curled or something like that what I also like to do even after I pre-cut the lace around here here is after I've really really customized my hairline and it's fitted to my head I like to take some small shears like this small scissors and just kind of remove a little bit more of that excess lace the less lace you have to work with the better <laughs> I mean you need a little bit of lace to kind of help but too much lace is super super noticeable and I'm sort of mirroring the hairline that I have and I'm really just cutting it along the front of my hairline so this is my new hairline. Ooh. Spooky. I should have did this for Halloween, huh? Removing my head. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this wig down. I got this cool beauty tip from Instagram first and I was subsequently like linked to different videos showcasing this cool beauty trick using gel as a glue and this is from got to be this is their spiking glue gel it's actually a gel but it's like water resistant and it has an amazing hold and it mimics the same type of hold that you would look for if you want to use a lace glue i love this beauty trick whoever discovered this first you guys are a genius you are so persistent in, in your quest of the perfect lace bond <laughs> i really appreciate whoever discovered that whoever that is you guys know who is the originator of finding this beauty trick go ahead and comment below tag them and just let them know that i say thank you because you are genius what i love about this more so than 
you know regular lace glue is that it gets the job done without that extra sticky slippage like I never had any good experience with lace glue I never had great experience with like the lace tape it always would slip I don't know you know if I don't clean my skin proper enough or I don't let it sit long enough or if I let it slip, sit too long and it has it is just always an issue but when I try this oh my goodness no joke so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to push my hairline back just a little bit looks weird <laughs> and I am going to use those clips to kind of help me hold that in place Hopefully it doesn't slip back. Yeah. And I'm just going to take a little bit of the gel and I'm just going to place it along the area where I will stick my lace frontal down. You don't need a huge messy glob of it. And it's totally okay to get into your hair and your hairline because guess what? It's gel. So around here I do kind of push it into my hairline. And I'm going to use something extra that I've never used before, and it's their freeze spray, and it's from the same company, Got To Be. So I'm going to add a little spray to that. And so the trick to this, because I've heard from uh, a couple of my uh, clients, friends, and followers that it didn't really work for them, maybe they were doing something wrong, is you have to let it dry for about 10 to 20 seconds. So I'm just going to use a blow dryer for that. You don't want to dry it out too much. That's another mistake that I've made first. And then I'm just going to pull that down and pop it into place very carefully. One thing about this particular gel, um, because they do have the black bottled one, but I really don't like the black bottled one. People like the black bottled one because it's clear. It dries clearer. And this yellow bottle one tends to leave like a white film to it if you are not careful with it. But one thing I like about this is that it has a stronger hold. I'm just gonna blast over that one last time with the spray that usually dissipates the white cast and I'm going to go back over it with a blow dryer. You don't really want to touch it right now with your fingertips. Just kind of brush the hair away, make sure it's all laying down, use the back of the comb or the tail of the comb to kind of make sure that everything is pressed into the skin. So I'm going to figure out the styling for this hair. I'm just going to go ahead and blow dry it and put my face on and yeah. Okay, you guys, so this is the finished look. This is the new hairline after it's been styled. You see I've opened it up a little bit more. I just brought it up a little bit further in this area, kind of left it as it was here. I didn't do too much different. If you guys saw this previous video, you'll probably tell a major difference between that hairline and this hairline. Now though, I really think that I probably should have started with a unit with a fresh hairline and just kind of customize it from there. I think you guys pretty much get the idea of what I was going for. Hopefully, I don't know. Mm. If not, I can't give all the secrets away. That's all I can say. The next time I create a new unit from scratch, then I will probably just go ahead and show a quick video on how I customized the lace frontal from a very dense, squared off, kind of factory direct hairline and, uh, and make it more realistic for you guys. I don't know, don't hold me to it, okay? <laughs> but we reached the end of this video and of course I hope that you learned a lot from it. I hope that you enjoyed it and got something from what I showed you in this video. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button so that you guys are hip and in the loop when I release another video. Of course you would want to know when I release the next installment of this Wigs and Weave Chronicles. So yeah, go ahead and subscribe. Make sure that you guys are liking this video if you like it. If you don't like it, press like. If you do like it, click like. If you hate it, select like right below this video. <laughs> I thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing if you have already. Make sure that you guys are following me on all my social media right over here. Yeah, yeah, do that. Do that for me. Appreciate it. And until next time, I will see you in the next video. Bye, Square Bears. <laughs>